Okay, this week's topic, how can you get approved as a self-employed home buyer? This is something we should all know, especially as realtors, as uh, professionals in the business, or as if you're self-employed, you're gonna wanna know how you can get a mortgage to buy a house. So everybody, you can chime in anytime you want. Just let me know you can hear my uh, microphone clearly. You can also send a chat if you want. Let's share the screen. All right, this is good. So before we get started, I want to let you know that this presentation is brought to you by a non for profit called the Center for Home Ownership and Community Enterprise. My name is Mark Giles, and I'll be doing the presentation today. And the point of this is to improve our community through knowledge, education, so that you can live an independent, dignified lifestyle and achieve the goals that you want to achieve for you, yourself, and your family. Uh, next thing is that um, my name is Mark Giles. I'm your host. I educate home buyers, realtors, innovators, and uh, investors, as well as business owners. And we're helping you to buy real estate, set up your business, grow your business, and become wealthy. Because when you win, we all win. So I wanna, we have to lift the entire community. Uh, I'm originally from the Bronx, live in Westchester. I'm a licensed real estate agent, as well as a licensed uh, mortgage loan originator. And additionally, I, I do, um, I'm a licensed as a insurance, insurance agent as well. My passion is to educate home buyers about the home buying process. So before we start, if you have any questions, feel free to hit the chat button. So if anything's not working, just hit the chat button and let me know if the mic's not working or you anything that's going wrong. Okay, so today we're going to dive in and get right down to the meat and potatoes. So first things first, if you are self-employed, you would want to register and license your business. What does that mean? That means you would want to form an LLC or a corporation. So if you want to, the whole point of this presentation is about buying real estate. If you want to buy real estate, you want to set yourself up successfully as a, if you want to buy it and you're self-employed, meaning that you make your money outside of a, a regular paycheck. This includes taxi drivers, real estate agents, uh, anybody who gets paid 1099, or if you own, a, own your own business, like a restaurant or a, um, any type of business, and you are making all of your money or most of your money as self-employed then what you would want to do is register and license your business because when you're applying for the mortgage, we would need to know that you have a real business. We need to know that you're set up and a corporation is a, is an entity or an LLC is an entity that you can have that you can utilize to uh, buy a house. But what the challenge is, is a lot of people don't, well, we'll get into it. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, okay. Another thing that you would want to consider doing, is paying yourself with a W-2 rather than an owner's draw. So the owner's draw is basically just taking money out of the cash register and putting it in your personal account. So first, if you have a, <clears throat> like we said in number one, if you set up your entity like a corporation, then what you could do is you could actually pay yourself as an employee. Obviously you have to be making the kind of money that would warrant that. So if you're making over $100,000 a year, it definitely makes sense for you to to um, pay yourself, right? So you could pay yourself $60,000 and then the company would profit the other $40,000. What that does, if you have done that for two years in a row, that establishes you as making $60,000 for two years in a row because your, your other expenses will come from the business, not from your W-2 paycheck. If you have any questions, like I said, just chime in. Uh, this is a small group, so we can definitely jump right in and, you know, answer any questions. Uh, next thing is you want to lower your debt load. Now, the goal here is to buy a house or buy real estate. So when most people are owning businesses, we always get their tax returns and I analyze the tax returns. And when we're analyzing the tax returns, what happens often is people are amassing debt. So they're saying, hey, I made $100,000, but I spent $99,000 of it doing business, which means that they don't pay any taxes. They'll pay taxes on that $1 or $1,000. If they spent 99,000 out of 100, they're only gonna pay a tax on 1,000, 1, which means they pay no taxes basically. And as you 
we hear in the news all the time, corporations don't pay taxes, it's all in the politics. But when you are not showing that you're making income, you cannot prove that you're making enough income to the bank so that you can buy the house. Years ago, they used to do stated income loans. We still have some stated income loans, we do. But if you're self-employed and you wanna buy a primary residence, then you're, you're gonna to need to show that you are making the income. So in a primary residence, you're gonna to need to show the income. And so you wanna keep your debt load low. Now, when they're looking for um, your employment and your income, we're always looking at two years history. So we wanna make sure that you're making enough income over the last two years to um, that shows enough income for you to actually purchase the property. At the end of this presentation, I'm gonna show you a case study that we use to show you um, what, how much income you will probably need in order to buy a property that, that you might wanna buy, like an investment property that you could move into as a first time home buyer even. Next thing we wanna focus on is reducing your tax deductions. So that's like lowering your debt burden, right? So you definitely wanna lower your credit card debts, student loans, low as you can, right? Much as you can, right? We're not trying to you know, do miracles here, but pay attention to how much debt you have on a monthly basis. The next thing on number four, you wanna reduce your tax deductions. What that means is if you are currently deducting $99,000 out of $100,000 of income, then you are not showing any income and therefore won't be eligible for a loan. So if you keep your deductions low and your profits high and you're showing enough income and you're paying yourself a salary, then you are gonna be showing enough cash flow that would enable you to uh, buy the house of your dreams. Okay, and of course you wanna sit with somebody like myself in order to find out how much cash you would need to make. So that's called planning, future planning, right? For next year, how much would I have to make? So then you can set your business goals accordingly. Next thing, number five, keep separate your business and personal accounts. A lot of customers that come through, they bring these tax returns and everything is all jumbled, right? They don't, they're not separating their business from their personal. So in number one, we talked about forming a business entity. That would be one, number one of the number one ways that you could actually begin to separate your, um, your business and your personal accounts. Very important because if you're mixing it all up, we can't tell what's business and what's personal. And therefore um, we're, you know, it, it's very difficult for the underwriter to approve you. All right. So keep separate your corporation from your personal accounts, keep separate your, uh, that's why you want to pay yourself the W-2. Now you can say that W-2 is your own personal income and it's coming to you. So when you're going to buy your house, it's easy for the lender to tell how, uh, that you have cash flow for your personal house. And of course you want to maintain good records. So you want to have a QuickBooks. I use QuickBooks. It's a great program and you can begin to track, classify your income, classify your expenses. If you're a business owner and you're a sole business owner, this is something that you should want to master, right? You want to master your profit and loss statement. You want to master your balance sheet. You should know how much money you made last quarter, last year, first quarter, this year, first quarter. Maybe you can even compare year over year. Am I doing better this year? than last year. These are some of the things that you would want to start paying attention to so that you can be effective when you're going to borrow this money to buy the house. Another thing you could do is consider making a larger down payment. Now, what you could do is, um, as a business owner, you should have a 401k. I always say we should have uh, at least a 401k and a corporation, okay? And then as you grow your business, you want to set up a non-for-profit corporation so you can give back to the community. And you also want to get a trust for your house, right? These are four items, four entities that I think every business person in America should have. But that's another story. Right now, uh, if you have a 401k, it's a wonderful way of saving money and you can make an arrangement if, as we're pre-planning, you can pre-plan to put more money into your 401k. So as when you're going to buy your house in the future, you can borrow against it. And when it comes down to reserves, having money in these um, retirement accounts can be used as cash reserves. So the bank knows that after you take possession of the property, then you will um, be able to still have money sitting there. So you're more likely to be successful. Make sure a better person to lend to, a better business person to lend to. Another thing is you wanna consider working with another small business. So for example, myself, uh, we work with a small company and I personally own a business and when you're working with uh, other small businesses, 
as a lender or a uh, person who's helping you provide the mortgage or financing for you, we fully understand your situation. That's who you would want to work with when you are trying to get a loan for your small business. Because when you go into Citibank and you're sitting behind, somebody sitting behind the desk has no knowledge, true real knowledge of what you're facing every day as a business owner, there's a difference, all right? You want to sit with somebody who fully understands how a small business works, the things that you're faced with, and what you could do practically to succeed in getting your mortgage to buy your house or your uh, investment property. So I want to get into a quick bonus topic, which is uh, learn how to qualify and apply for your mortgage in six easy steps. Okay, once again, as a small business owner, uh, you want to look at your two years tax returns. This is incredible. This is, in, it's, this is important here because most people that come through have no idea what's on their tax returns, let alone understand how the tax return works. <clears throat> so I'm encouraging you to learn how your tax returns work, learn what tax bracket you're in. This is, this is, this is important. When you're going to your accountant to do your taxes at the end of the year, you should have play a more uh, active role in telling your accountant what you qualify for and you know how you want your taxes filed. So I'm encouraging you to look at your past two years tax returns now and really start picking it apart. What did I gross? What did I spend? Uh, you know, on this sheet of paper, what does it say I earned? What does it say I my expenses were? What was uh, what am I paying taxes on? If I'm if I'm getting a re return on my tax, like what is that for? And if you're not exactly sure, ask your accountant. When you're talking to a lender, we're looking at your tax returns, but I can assure you, we're looking at it from a different point of view than your accountant is looking at it. So if you're talking to your lender about your tax return, it's going to be a different conversation than you would have with your accountant because we have a different way of looking at the same thing because we have different goals and you have different goals. And so when you're talking to your, your mortgage loan officer like myself, I would be able to talk to you in terms of your home buying goals. But when you're talking to your accountant, it's more about your tax goals, right? So you can't really have your accountant guide you when it comes to buying a house. He's gonna tell you what he feels he needs to know. And the same way, I, I'm not the kind of guy who could really tell you how to save on your tax burden because I don't, I'm not a tax accountant. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you get the financing to buy the house. So next thing you wanna do is complete your paperwork. When you're going to buy a house, that's another thing. You have all of your papers, not just ready, right? You wanna have the, you, you have two years tax returns as self-employed. You wanna have your bank statements, but you wanna really understand them and, and talk to your mortgage loan officer in terms of what's important. What about large deposits? Like a lot of times lenders will not like large cash deposits going into your bank account. So I'm encouraging you to complete your paperwork, uh, maybe start the application process, the pre-approval process long, process long before, so you can get pointed in the right direction in terms of buying your property. Next thing you wanna start paying attention to is your debt to income ratio. That is a, that's jargon. That's jargon for the uh, mortgage business. But if you're self-employed, you should be, um, knowledgeable about your debt to income ratio, right? Not just for buying the house, but currently, how much are you spending of your total income on your debt right now? So last month, how much did you make? How much was spent on your debt? When we're talking about debt, we're talking about car note, housing expenses, uh, whether it's rent or your current mortgage. Uh, then you're looking at your automobile expense, a monthly payment. When we're talking about debt, we're only talking about like finance debt, student loans, car notes, mortgages. Uh, you wanna pay attention to that. How much is going in that direction of your total debt and how to reduce it? Because that's what makes your life a little easier. That's where you start to head towards freedom and you can get rid of your, your debt burden. Uh, don't throw a pity party. Um, okay, so that's just something like to talk about the, your monthly payment, principal interest, tax and insurance, right? That is what your new mortgage would comprise of, principal interest tax and insurance. So when you are uh, thinking about buying your new house, you want to be, get clear on if I bought this particular house, what would my principal interest tax and insurance be? And then you can start setting your goals to make your income enough to achieve the um, debt to income ratio that would be um, sufficient enough 
to allow you to make that payment. So I'll show you in a second, I'm going to show you an example of what that could be, what that would look like. And of course, you want to focus on your credit, especially as a business owner, you're going to be looking for more business credit and you want to focus on getting more, being increasing your capacity to get more credit, especially as a business owner, you will want to be able to borrow as much money as you possibly can. That's a part of your overall business plan. So for example, I'm just gonna to touch on this lightly, but it's a great topic. If somebody were to lend you a million dollars tomorrow, you could do so many things with it, but if you have to wait to earn a million dollars to have the million dollars, you might have to wait years, 10 years before you can, and, and forget about saving a million dollars, even just to make a million dollars, $100,000 a year for 10 years, yes, you will have made a million dollars. But to save a million dollars is, you're gonna to have to make a lot more money and you're gonna to have to work three times as hard. But if you go down to the bank tomorrow, sign a sheet of paper, a couple of documents, and they gave you a check for a million dollars, that's incredible. Because as a business owner, you can do so much more with that money. And now, if you look at large companies like Amazon, these companies were doing business for like 20 years before they even became profitable. And where did they get this money to operate? They borrowed it. All right, you might see they got it from investors, but they have to pay back these investors. So these investors that gave them the money were not like um, uh, getting paid a, 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 um, a monthly payment, but they constantly were going out to investors on uh, different markets, right? It might be the NASDAQ or the, um, on, on Wall Street. But the fact is they were going to other people to get money. And the only reason they could do that is because they have excellent credit. Right, they had a great business idea. They were in the game. They were playing. They were generating cash flow, and at the same time, they kept their credit excellent. And so, as a business person, you want to always increase your uh, capacity to borrow more and more and more money. And this is a great place to start. Next thing is don't take too many deductions. I know we said that before, but I just wanted to repeat it again. If you're looking to buy a real estate, you cannot go to the IRS and say, I didn't make any money, and then go to the lender and say, yes, I made money. I have enough money to, to make the payment because the lender is going to look at your tax returns. So whatever you're telling the IRS is what the lender is going to see. So if you're telling the IRS you're not making any money, you can't go down the block to the lender and say, yes, I am making money, even though I don't do that. That's called fraud, right? So and you won't get the house. It doesn't even matter. Fact is you won't get the house. In order to get the house, you're gonna to have to restructure your business so that you're generating cash flow and taking less deductions. And that's not just the house, but any loan. When you're looking to borrow money, people wanna know, the lenders wanna know that you are making money. And finally, there's no cost to sit down with a professional uh, a real estate professional like myself, qualified lender or a um, mortgage company to really get an understanding of what you qualify for. Uh, but you want to work with somebody who's competent in this field and has been doing it for a while who can and understands your situation. Not all mortgage loan officers and lending companies are alike. So you want to work with somebody who understands small business. We have a lot of people who have, have, I've worked with over the past very successfully and love to share ideas and educate you more. So real quick, I want to show you a case study. Here's a property in Bush, Bushwick. All right, before we go into this case study, I want to just point this out to you. Oh, here we go. Okay, these video presentations are for educational and entertainment purposes only, and it's not for legal or financial advice that we're giving. And I'm not an accountant, I'm not a financial, I'm a financial planner, but I'm not an accountant and I'm not a lawyer. I'm a mortgage guy, right? I'm a mortgage loan originator and, and real estate guy, all right? So I, over the last 20 years, I've amassed a lot of knowledge that I definitely want to share with you guys. And so I'm going to just give you, uh, oh, and the results that we're demonstrating in these videos are not guaranteed. You must apply, qualify. It's not an offer to lend. This is brought to you by the Center for Home Ownership, and uh, which is a non-for-profit and I'm just your host, okay? So, and we're not making any commitments to lend in this uh, presentation. So this right here is a house in Brooklyn, right? An example, this house is selling for, it's a four family house, it's selling for $999,000. A 
So if you were to buy these properties, you can get this property with $35,000 down if you're a first time home buyer. Okay. And you're going to live in the house, right? So FHA is one of the programs that provides mortgages for these kind of houses. So if you were to buy this house, and this is just an example, right? We're doing an example just to educate and inspire you as well. But the principal and interest on this house would be about $4,400 uh, a month. Property tax would be 580. The homeowner's insurance would be about 300 and your mortgage insurance through an FHA program would be about 683. So your final monthly payment on this house would be 59.72. So if you have to have a 45 back end ratio, I got to calculate this with my calculator here. So you take the 59.70, let's say 6,000 a month, divide that by 45%. The income that you would need for this house right here would be $13,333. However, if this house is earning income, now I'm just not, I didn't put the income that we are going to pretend that this house is making, but if it's four units in here, I'm going to let Sabrina in. If this house is a four unit house, um, then let's say it's making $2,000 a unit. That's two times four is $8,000 a month. So obviously you're going to, wait a minute, 2000 a month income per apartment, which I think is conservative, right? We don't know what kind of units are in there, but let's say it's two, yeah, that's $8,000 a month income. Now this FHA program is designed for you to live in the property. So you're only gonna get three incomes. So while the monthly payment is 5,000, as you can see here, right below this yellow, the payment on this house would be approximately $5,972. The property, would be bringing in 6,000 if you're occupying one of the units. So you'd be on a kind of like a break even right there, which is excellent. Now, if um, the income with no, now the income required for this property, we said is $13,333, but already we're giving you $6,000 from the other three units. So the way FHA calculates it, they only give you 75% of that. So I don't want to make this a math class, but the bottom line is if you are making, so we're going to minus out 4,500 from here, 8,880, $8,800 a month times 12 months. So $106,000, that would be the amount that would be required to buy this house. Now, obviously if you're buying this property, and once again, this is an example, you're buying this property and it has a three bedroom, let's say you're gonna occupy one of the three bedroom apartments, you could literally have two other people buying this house with you. So if you have, if the total income is $106,000 requirement, you could have two people living in this house. So if you divide that by two, that's $53,000 a year per person. All right, so if you're a business owner and you can show $53,000 a year for two years in a row, from your business coming in positive income because you own a corporation and because you're paying yourself on a W-2 and you're keeping your expenses low, then you would be able to actually purchase something like this with somebody else who's making $53,000. All right, so that's what we call a case study. I'm gonna be doing more of these case studies in the future, but this is a property we found in Brooklyn. So this is a typical example of what's possible. And if you had three people, right? So you take the 106,000 divided that by three incomes, that's $35,000. So if you have three people making $35,000 positive cash flow, they could actually buy a property like this making, and, and, and it's generating $6,000 a month worth of income, positive cash flow. So it kind of carries itself. So these are the kind of things that we need to educate ourselves about, learn more about, and that I'll be teaching more about in more of these classes. And we're setting up a membership site. I'm going to send you the link to the membership site. Everybody who's on here, just text me or email me. I'll send you the link so you can sign up for the membership site. So I'll take these videos and we're going to keep putting them there so you can go back to them, watch them. And if you have any ideas about any future um, presentations or knowledge or information that you'd like to learn about, just, you know, hit me up, email me, text me call me because I'm going to be doing these once a week, every Thursday. Next week, we're doing the 203K, talking about how you can buy a house, renovate it, 
to your liking and borrow the money with one loan. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask me now. Or um, I think, oh, that property is the, the map that's in Brooklyn. And uh, so we're just going to recap real quick. So we talked about eight ways to get approved as a self-employed home buyer. First one is register and license your business. If you are making over like $7,500,000 a year, I would really suggest you open a corporation. Um, pay yourself. Uh, I do that myself, right? I have a corporation to pay myself. That's how you would want to structure that. That way you can separate your, your personal income from your corporate income. You want to lower your debt load, keep your debts low, keep your um, expenses low so you can, uh, and your income high. You want to reduce your tax reductions. Talk to your accountant about that, right? Um, yeah, you can do, I would recommend you do four times a year, do your tax planning. So when the end of the year, end of the year comes, there's no surprises. Uh, next one was keep your business and your personal accounts separate. Always, that's a big to do. Maintain good records. If you do have a corporation, you should learn how to run a corporation properly. There's a lot of information about that. We did a, co a course on that. We did a class on a video on that uh, about three weeks ago. That'll be on the site. I'll have it all up there. Maintain your good records. Consider making a larger down payment. That means you're going to save more money in your 401k. And of course, when you are looking for your mortgage, always consider working with a small business as opposed to a big bank, right? Because the big banks, they hire employees and a lot of these guys have no idea with what you're dealing with. They just paper takers. You need to work with someone like myself at a smaller organization, a privately owned company. We have a lot of information. We can share a lot of details with you how to achieve your goals financially in terms of getting mortgages, buying investment properties and growing your, your wealth. All right, so I think that wraps it up. So if you have any questions, I would love to hear them right now. Question and answer. Otherwise, you can give me a call, shoot me an email. That's my email address right there. And um, I thank you for attending. I will see you next week. All right. Any questions? Going once, twice. All right. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys attending and supporting. And like I said, we're going to put this up and have it uh, available for you to re review later on. All right. Thank you. That wraps it up. More chat. Oh, we got a chat. I think I have a question here. Uh, oh, what if you use your business like a group home or a daycare? Will the lender take that into account? Yes. Okay. If you use a unit. Okay. When you're talking about a group home or a daycare, you're talking about insurance. I just want to point that out, right? So if you have a four, that same house that we saw there, let's say you wanted to put a group home in there. Or first of all, you'd have to go through the city. You'd have to get your insurance and everything set up and you wanna be in compliance with the zoning and laws and all of that. The lender who's gonna lend you the money is gonna be very, 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 very concerned about that, all right? But are you insured? Are you uh, licensed as a daycare or a group home? So when you're borrowing money to do these, these daycares, group homes, the lender will get all up in your business, all right? They're gonna ask you hundreds of questions. And if you don't mind answering all of that, yes, you could get a loan to do that. Uh, but I would recommend maybe a storefront. If you're going to do the group home or business, well, the group home, you're going to need a home, obviously. But for the daycare, you might want to rent a space that would be more conducive for the daycare. Because when you're doing it inside different neighborhoods and private homes, the neighbors can complain. And, you know, my mother had one on 216th Street in the Bronx. And right across the street from her, every morning, 7, between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., it's like this huge traffic jam just cars coming, dropping people off. And it, a lot of the neighbors started complaining and, you know, so, but if you want to go in business, I recommend you go in business as businesses do. I had a friend of mine with a daycare. He got a grant from the government of like a million dollars uh, just to run the daycare. And he was able to borrow money for the business to run the daycare. So think big. I encourage you to think big. All right. Um, okay. So I thank you guys once again for coming out. Um, look forward to answering any more questions you might have. And uh, next Thursday, 6 p.m., we'll be back again with more. Hello, Mr. Park. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Bessie? How are you, sir? Yeah, I do, sir. Yes, good. Okay, I just want a quick question as regards to uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, reduce your, uh, your tax deduction. 
So what that does really means? I just want to get a little. I understand a little bit, but I don't hundred percent sure. Can okay. you just give me more detail? Okay. So when you are, uh, let's say you you have a um, a business. You have a business. I know you have a business, real estate business. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's say you made uh, three hundred thousand dollars this year, right? Mm. Uh, what most people do who make three hundred thousand dollars, they don't want to pay tax on it, right? So okay. you're going to say, "Hey, IRS." I made three hundred thousand dollars. Sounds like a lot of money, right? But Mr. IRS, it's not because I had to buy uh, my truck. I had to spend thousand um, uh, dollars a month on my truck. That was uh, so I want to deduct that. So I'm going to tell the IRS I spent money in order to make the three hundred thousand dollars. So when you're telling the IRS that even though you made three hundred thousand dollars, you had to spend two hundred and fifty thousand of it to make the three hundred thousand then they're only going to tax you on the 50,000. Okay. That's what most people do. And in fact, okay. a lot of people will say, I know I made 300,000, but I spent 325,000 to make the 300. So I don't want to pay a penny in tax. So you won't tax me on anything. Okay. So to say, if you mm -hmm. want to be a home buyer as a yes. uh, self-employed, yes. uh, you just need to put your expense down. Okay, so what you could do, what you could do mm -hmm. that I'm suggesting here also is to pay yourself a salary, right? So okay. you take your three, I made 300,000, well, my company, my company made 300,000, right? Okay, but I had salesmen, right? So these one salesman made 100, he, he gave me 100, but I had to pay him 50% of that. So that's a tax deduction, right? So yeah, I have the company, John works for the company, John sells, he brought in $100,000 worth of income, but I had to pay John, you know, 50 thousand dollars or seventy five thousand dollars of the hundred so i only made twenty five thousand dollars mr irs so i only want you to tax me on the 25 right but me personally i went out and i sold some houses and i made a hundred thousand dollars right yeah so what i should do is i should pay myself a salary of sixty thousand dollars or seven oh, okay 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 see? okay and then i'll withhold taxes for myself so i'm my own employee or I'm an employee of the corporation that I created. And as an employee of the corporation, I get paid $70,000. And so okay. now when you're going to apply for the loan, Essie made $70,000. Yes, yes, okay, okay. It's not gonna be the 100,000, yes. Exactly, exactly. Got it. It's, it's, it's a tax deduction for the corporation, right? Because the corporation yes. made 100 grand, but yes, you paid yes. an employee named Essie 75 of it. Five times, yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, got you, sir. Yeah, because what a lot of people, I just want to point out, what a lot of people do is they come up with some other stuff. You know, that trip that I took to Puerto Rico, that was a mm -hmm. business trip and it cost 25 grand, all right? Or, oh, that thing I put on the side of my house, I want to deduct that. Or this thing over here. Or they come up with all kinds of stuff that they, they spend yeah, the yeah. money in other ways and it disappears. And then they go to the IRS and say, oh, I spent it doing this. Okay. You, you can still get the 60,000, the 75,000 that's paid to you as a salary and still spend it at the casino. You could still do that. But the fact is you still made that money. Got you. Thank you, sir. Okay. You got it. You're the best, man. <laughs> hey, thank you. Don't spend the money at the casino. Though. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All thank right. You, so, um, the grant. Okay. Yeah. The grants are another thing. You know what? We're going to talk about grants. We'll do a video on the grants. We're going to do one on tax, tax liens. Uh, we're going to do that on next week. We're going to do the 203k loan, uh, but we got a lot of information. And I'm going to, I have some guest people that we're bringing on to. I have a couple of attorneys that we're going to be bringing on. And, uh, but this is all for us to grow. I need you guys to win. I need you to succeed. This is about our community. And if you're winning, I'm winning too. So I need you to win. I can't, you know, can't do it all by ourselves. That's a myth. All right. So uh, anytime, just give me a shout and uh, I'll be here. All right. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys. And we'll catch up next week. Thank you, Mr. Mark. All right. Peace. Have a good night.